Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Reagan. if you are new here. Alrighty, so if you're into all things clean beauty, I do five videos a week over here, I at least try to. Um, so click that subscribe button down below if you're into that, I'm here. And I just wanted to tell you all, this is a special video because it's a collab with my friend Kat from Naturally Beautiful Girl. We've both been trying out a lot of different sunscreens for the face and we decided to collaborate and talk about them with you all. So I'm excited to see her picks, what she liked, what she didn't. I'll have her video and her channel and Instagram and everything linked down below. Kat was one of my first friends on YouTube who also does clean beauty. And she is such a delight. She's full of knowledge. She's very thorough in her reviews. That's something I highly appreciate about her. She's a makeup and beauty lover too, and I'm really sad because I was supposed to go and meet up with her in Boston in April, and it didn't work out with COVID. So I'm really sad about that, but we are doing this collab, and hopefully, you know, within the next year, I'll get to go and go to the event we were gonna go to together and meet up with her. So, yeah. Uh, check that out and let's just start. So I'm talking all about sunscreens and I'm doing my four best four worst. I don't know what style she's going to be doing it in, but I have four that I think are awesome and then four that I just don't think are worth it and I wouldn't repurchase. I'm going to give my reasons for that when I talk about the worst. What I look for and what I consider a good sunscreen, I like something that doesn't have a white cast. Of course, even as pale as I am, I do get white casts and it doesn't look cute. Um, I also like something that's not super heavy because a lot of times, these are all zinc based sunscreens. A lot of times zinc sunscreens can be really heavy and they make you hot and sweaty. And from what I understand, I was watching something on Instagram about zinc oxide sunscreens, like a little short film thing. And I thought that they reflected light. So I thought that they reflected UVA and UVB rays. Actually, apparently, the zinc absorbs the UVA and UVB, excuse me, rays and breaks it down before it can penetrate your skin. So don't quote me on any of that, but I actually would believe that because a lot of times when I use zinc SPFs, they make me very hot. So I always am looking for something that doesn't make me super hot and sweaty. And I also like something that's not physically heavy on the skin. I like something that's very absorbent. I also got this from the interweb. So what it says is, well, SPF 15 is the FDA's minimum recommendation for protection against skin cancer and sunburn. The ADA, which is the American Academy of Dermatology, recommends using an SPF with at least 30. So everything I'm talking about today, minus one is 30 plus. I do have one that's 25. I do like that one. We'll talk about it and we'll talk about why, but let's just roll in and start chatting. I just kind of want to give you some background of SPF and what you should be looking for. These are all, again, zinc oxide based facial sunscreens. I'll have a video of my favorite body sunscreen linked up here. I like this for like pool and stuff. These are just my everyday under makeup SPFs and that's what I've been using them as and testing them out. So yeah, let's just start. Okay, so my new favorite is this. This is the 11 by Venus Unrivaled Sun Serum and SPF 35. All of these are pretty pricey. All the ones I tend to like are really pricey. It kind of sucks. I wish they weren't so pricey because I put off purchasing this because I was like, uh, it's $55. It's a sunscreen. I wear sunscreen every day, but it's so expensive. This is a revolutionary product. So it's this really watery, oily type consistency. It looks like it's watery. It's actually an oil base. And then 25% zinc oxide is suspended into this oil base. So it really absorbs into the skin because it's so liquidy. This is a beautiful formulation. It seriously leaves no white cast, absorbs really well into my skin. I haven't had any irritation, any issues with it. It makes me want to wear sunscreen. The only problem I've actually had with this is the packaging where the first few times I used it, um, this vial thing got enough of the product in it. But the way this is designed is when you close this, the yellow thing goes down and then when you open this up like this it goes up and it's supposed to suction the product out well you don't get enough so what i've been doing i've just been pouring it directly into my hand 
I am okay with that. Um, it didn't totally break this product for me, so that is something that the packaging is a little bit faulty. I actually just wish that I could decide with a dropper how much myself instead of having this packaging because it just doesn't dispense the right amount. So that, again, that's something that's against it, but it's still my favorite one just because of the formulation. It is a gloss packaging. I think the packaging is beautiful other than that. They say that it leaves a velvety finish. I would agree. There's absolutely zero white cast. It absorbs into the skin. It kind of in formulation, if anyone's ever tried, there's like a L'Oreal product or there used to be. I used this when I was in high school or something as a facial SPF. This is similar in the way that it absorbs, excuse me, into the skin. It doesn't just sit on top. It's not super white casty. It's just a beautiful, beautiful formulation and I have loved it. This one is my number one favorite. I would repurchase it when Credo has their friends and family sale, which is sometime in November, I will be picking up like three of those because they usually do 20% off during that sale because I love that SPF and I wear it every damn day. Okay, and then this is another one I really have liked. This is the Fit Glow Beauty Vita Shield Broad Spectrum SPF 30. This one, what's nice about it is it's very similar to what you would just expect in an SPF, but it blends well and absorbs nicely into the skin. I don't get white cast from this. This is one of the few just white untinted sunscreens that I do not get a white cast from. It's not super heavy. It's actually pretty whipped in a way, like even when you pump it out, it feels more whipped-like and airy than really thick and heavy. So I have really liked this one. This is another one that I have repurchased a few times now. I would repurchase it again. I think it's really nice under makeup. It's really lightweight, as well as the Venus one. Um, they're two that I've just really liked. I haven't had any problems with either one of them at all. They're my two, like, absolute fave SPFs for the face. All right, and then this one I've used a couple times. So this is my third bottle of this, but this is a little bottle. This is a sample I got. So this is the Blissoma Photonic Light Shifting Solution SPF 25. So what I like about this is it looks like it's tinted, but it's not. The red tint from this is actually a red algae. I feel like because of that red tint, it doesn't tint the skin at all. When you rub it in, there's no redness or anything like that. I feel like that red algae cancels out the white color of the zinc oxide. So when you rub this into your skin, there's nothing. I mean, there's no white cast. It's a very lightweight. It's a little bit more watery as well. It's very liquidy. And it's just been one that I've really liked. Really great under makeup not heavy, just a really beautiful one. And again, that red is not a tint. It is an algae, a red algae that makes it red, but it does not appear red on the skin. When you blend it out, it's kind of like if you use a purple body lotion, when you blend that purple body lotion in, you're not going to be purple kind of thing, unless you're using the copper tone sunscreen that any of us remember as kids. Remember that? It was like a purple sunscreen that when you rubbed it in, it was clear. Kind of similar concept with this, but this is a clean, natural product. All right, and then this is a newer one to me. This is the Josh Rosebrook Nutrient Day Cream. We got this in the August 2020 Beauty Heroes box. I'll be unboxing that or not really unboxing it because clearly I unboxed it and I used this because I wanted to see how I felt about it and include it in this video. But I'll be talking more about that this upcoming week. So again, subscribe and stay tuned for that. I tried a sample of this. I mean, I ordered a sample that came in a little plastic thing that was not this quality. It was one of those little discs that if you order clean beauty samples, you get that in. And when I ordered it like that, it oxidized really bad. And so I didn't think this was for me. This is actually a very, very light shade, this tinted day cream. I used it today under my makeup and I still am wearing foundation, concealer, the whole kit and caboodle kind of thing. This actually isn't as tinted as one might think. Again, I'm wearing all of this stuff over it. So it's one that I've liked because it blends out really nicely into my skin. I'm not sure how well this would work for someone who is darker complected. 
because I am so pale, I'm just noticing that, wow, I don't have a white cast from this. So if anyone who is dark and complected could speak up about that and let us know if you've tried this tinted day cream, how it works with your complexion, for me, it blends in seamlessly. I mean, I have no white cast, really lightweight product. I don't have that dry, heavy feeling or that dry, even moisturized feeling. You guys know if you've tried a lot of SPFs, what I'm talking about, they're either dry and chalky or they're really oily and you just feel like you're melting. So I don't get that with this. This one is very nice, very lightweight. Again, this is the tinted one. I do know that they have one that's not tinted. I just don't know how that wears and blends out. This one for me worked great. Again, can't speak for everyone, but this is one of the few tinted ones that's an actual tint that I like. I'm going to talk in my flops about some other tinted ones that just no dice for me. But this one, this one's a lot of dice. I don't know if that's how that saying goes. But again, it's just really lightweight and blends out into my skin. Doesn't look like I'm wearing sunscreen kind of thing. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing sunscreen. Okay, and then I have my worse. So in talking about these, I have three that I don't think are god awful. It's just, let me talk about them so you understand. I have one that I just wouldn't recommend at all and I just think is really bad now. But three of them that I'm going to talk about are kind of in between, but I just wouldn't repurchase them myself. So that's why I'm putting them in the worst. So I have this Unsun, I purchased this. This is their mineral tinted face sunscreen. So I would not recommend this one at all. I would recommend the brand. I was actually looking, I purchased the wrong product. This was my bad in me being cheap. This is their mineral tinted face sunscreen lotion, which that's kind of confusing. So apparently they have a couple of different formulations and that was kind of hard for me to distinguish because it says it's a mineral tinted face sunscreen. I thought, oh great, it's 15 bucks. I found a great affordable option to share with everyone because I always try and find something. My problem with this is it is very heavy and dimethicone. So this really reminds me of the Benefit Professional in finish. It's just really silicone-y feeling and I don't like that. They do have another formulation. I was looking this up and I printed this out just so you guys would know that is about $30 and it's also tinted. So there is that other option. The one that's $15 has a lot more synthetics in the base. The one that is $30 doesn't have that and is a lot cleaner. So I kind of ordered the not as clean one because I was being cheap and I just honestly didn't realize that they were different formulations. I just thought they were similar or something. So don't get the white one, get the silver one if you're going to get this product. Another thing I don't like about it is it says that it's for light, medium skin tones. I'm very fair. I mean, I understand that. I just kind of assumed, and you know what they say when you assume things, that this was going to blend out on my skin and be perfect. It wasn't. Um, it's very deep shade. It's very tan. I looked like an Oompa Loompa when I was wearing this. So just not one I would recommend, not one I would repurchase if you're as fair as I am. And that's another thing is I was looking at their one that is more expensive and cleaner. It seems like for that, they only have a light medium and then a medium dark shade. So I just don't think this would work for everyone skin tone wise because it is pretty tinted. I look like an Oompa Loompa. I just, I can't get away with using this really under makeup because it interferes with the tones of my makeup, but it's one that I could see others liking potentially if you have the skin tone for it. So that's why I'm keeping it, you know, higher up on the worst or wouldn't repurchase because I do see where there are others out there who might really enjoy it. Same thing kind of goes for this Evolve Organic Beauty. This is their Climate Veil Tinted Light Medium SPF. I actually really like the formulation and base of this. It's a little bit oily, but it's pretty absorbent. My problem is, is the tint. Again, I look very dark when I use this and I am not a very dark person. So I want something that I can just use sunscreen and not have to use makeup because I don't wear makeup every day, but I do wear sunscreen every day. And this made me look way darker than I am, kind of like I was using my grandma's foundation that's way too dark for me. So 
if they came out with something that's for fair people, honestly, in both of these, I would try it. It's just, I do have a problem with the tinted sunscreens. I was surprised I like this Josh Rosebrook one because it is so lightly tinted. The other two brands, the Unsun and the Evolve, just are way too deep and I can't get away with just wearing that. Like I need to kind of mess around with using some foundation that goes with it, yada, yada, yada. They just aren't chameleon products that I can use with anything. And then my next one for worse that maybe some people would like is, this isn't even really a worse, I would maybe more just put it in, in between, is this Iuna Velo. It's very expensive, it's $122. They've reformulated it, repackaged it, made it a lot more I was gonna say more better, but just more user friendly. My problem with this, this really pills with everything I use with it. So if I do a whole skincare routine and finish out with this Velo product, it pills. If I use water-based stuff under it, pills. If I use oil-based stuff under it, pills. The only way I could get this product to work is if I'd cleanse, use a toner mist, let that dry, and then only use this. So I could see where someone might like this product because even for $122, if you're only using three products, that's something. I mean, that might make it worth it. But it is a little bit more tinted. It kind of is like a beauty balm. If you know much about BB creams and K-beauty, not all BB creams and K-beauty are actually supposed to be foundation or a tinted moisturizer. It's actually supposed to be more of a skin perfecting kind of primer type product. That's what this is. My problem with it is again, I like to do like a seven step system actually, morning and evening. And with this, it's just, I can't do that because it pills so heavily. Um, Just a little bit of information about this because I didn't know that much about this product. This isn't sponsored or anything, but just so you guys know. This is a six-in-one product. It's a dream come true for skin, offering a feeling of support and hydration. It's supposed to keep skin looking young, plump, and youthful. They don't say that this is an SPF, but it does have zinc oxide in it, and it does have enough that qualifies it as about like an SPF of 25 to 30. So it's very expensive actually to get that SPF registration with the FDA. It's one of the only things that's classified as a drug in skincare. So keep that in mind. This is still an SPF, but it's just not one that I'm absolutely obsessed with because I like to use some water-based serums and things under it. And if I do that, it extremely pills. So that's my problem with it. But someone who's really simple, if you only want to wash your face, use a toner and then use this, this would be your golden ticket. I mean, it's a three-step system. And because of the tint of it, it does kind of, I don't want to call it a real tint. It's more like a pore perfecting product where it just evens out your skin tone. You do, might not even need to use a foundation. So I could see a purpose of that, but it's again, not my favorite one because I like to use a lot of stuff under my SPF. All right, and then last, and the reason that I actually started testing out all these SPF products, this is the Sun Tigrity, their natural moisturizing face sunscreen and primer. I stocked up on this product because this used to be my absolute ride or die favorite facial SPF. It is no longer, and it's actually gone from my best to my worst. They've switched the formulation. I don't believe they ever announced that they've switched the formulation of this because I really loved this product. I know they switched the formulation. This is probably my fifth bottle of this. It's heavy now, meaning I get like a white cast mask, white cast, excuse me, mask, and it's awful. It's so heavy and oily, and I just don't love it. Again, it made me seek out all these different options because I wanted to see like, well, what else works? I actually think the Fit Glow is a good sub for what the original formulation was of this. It's just much lighter weight, the Fit Glow one. This one's just so heavy, man, and the white cast in it is awful. Will I still continue to use this until empty because I am petty and cheap? Yes, I will. I've been wearing it in the mornings when we take the dogs out on walks because I just don't really care. I use it on my face and my chest. If people see me looking like a white freak, that's fine. I mean, it's their prerogative to judge me, but I wouldn't want to wear this out. I wouldn't want to wear this to film under my makeup and all that because it is so heavy and such a white cast. I just, 
I'm trying to reiterate this multiple times. I do not recommend this product anymore. They've changed the formulation. It's not as good as it used to be. Alrighty, y'all. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your favorite facial sunscreen. I really am happy to have the top four that I picked though and know that those options exist. Again, this is a more expensive category. I'm not 100% sure why. I think it's probably related to having to get that it's a few thousand dollars. I believe it's like ten to twenty thousand dollars to get that certification for an SPF. So I don't know if it's related to that. I'm not sure if it's the ingredients as well, if they're just more expensive because all of these were not cheap. Even the Unsun, the version that I should have tried that would have been a little bit more expensive, and this is my cheaper option. The silver bottle is $30. The most expensive one I have here is $122. I don't recommend that you just need that product at all. It's such a personal thing. Like if that's your skincare routine, awesome. The ones I did recommend as my top four are really great options for everyday sunscreen. Alrighty guys, so head over, check out Kat's channel and her video. I'll have it linked down below. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world.